It's really hard to imagine that. I mean, first of all, uh, when we talk, uh, look at NAFTA or a new name, MCA, um, it really is true. Is it? It, it pretty much a rebranding of the NAFTA with some components of uh, uh, TPP into it. So the, the whole point about those trade deals with, you know, we have Japan, South Korea, Canada, Mexico, it's all about bilateral um, agreements, which in it uh, would, would have uh, conditions. So if you trade with China, if you do things with China, uh, then we, we have the right to pull out. So that makes, it, that makes the US position a lot stronger uh, to go after China. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I don't really know. I mean, I, I, what do they actually want from China? Uh, what do they want them to do? So to me, that suggests that tension, it's a long, it's a chronic tension that we will have to deal with. And that will be a source of market volatility and opportunities at the same time. And Nader, you bring up a good point here. There are questions as to what do the U.S. and China actually want here. It's a very different situation than renegotiating NAFTA because that was already a deal in place. We were talking about an update here. With the U.S. and China, we're talking about really reinventing a trade relationship going forward for so many decades at least. So given that volatility that you're expecting, how are you investing around these volatile times? Yeah, so first of all, you know, we have had some, you know, uh, some of the uncertainty and fear around uh, NAFTA being resolved. And, and at the same time, when you look at some of the Latin American uh, markets, Mexican equity market, Mexican currency, uh, Brazilian currency, some of those Latin American uh, uh, equity markets that actually should benefit from rising commodity prices have been under pressure. Um, so with that out of the way, so it actually opens the door to maybe looking for opportunities. And in fact, we are starting to allocate back to Latin American and emerging market bonds. When it comes to China, though, I think when you talk about, when you see this is going to be a long-term issue, um, China is uh, you know, the, most, uh, the, the most possible, the, the possible answer for China is uh, to face the aggression from the US by supporting domestic demand. And on that front, we will continue to see um, monetary policy easing, we will continue to see more fiscal policy support and to, to support the domestic consumer. And on that front, opportunities in the Chinese uh, stock market will be at sector level, areas of the market that will benefit from stronger uh, consumer demand and stronger consumer in China and some part of the banking, banking area. So it's hard to look for opportunities at an uh, index level. Uh, because underneath that sector, underneath the market, there are a lot of sector divergences, uh, which will, uh, some, some which will benefit from these trade tensions, some will, um, will have a negative impact. In, in sectors that have uh, reliance on export to the U.S. obviously will be impacted and the impact will be ongoing. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.